Genius as well as the voice of the Daleks through the 1980s. Please welcome Mr. Royce Mills. The legs aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> oh, uh, God, who would have guessed? Have you ever done one of these before? Yes. Oh, uh, does it? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, once or twice. Just once, but not, not a, you're not a regular. I've never. No. No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Royce, you'll all have heard, you won't have seen him in Doctor Who, but as I was just explaining to him outside, I grew up. I'm now, I know I'm old, but I grew up watching Royce do untold amounts of. TV in the 70s in particular, where he was, you were barely off for the screens. Well, well. <laughs> in, <laughs> in comedy and sitcom. And how, how did you get into doing that sort of thing before uh, we got to who you worked with? Well, I, I started in 1956. It was my first television <laughs> uh, as, a, as a boy. Right. Uh, live from Lime Grove. Right. In children's town, I cannot remember what I did, but it, um, that's that, that's when it, the rot set in. <laughs> uh, then a bit later on, I tried trained to be an actor. Well, I trained as a, a designer, this designer actually. I thought it was silly. You can't earn a living, you know, acting. Uh, and somehow I did. I got a scholarship to the Guild Hall, right, <coughs> and um, learnt about it. And um, oh, I, I, I was given a scholarship by the BBC. Um, I think they call it the Carlton Hobbs now. Um, but um, it gave you um, six months with the rep, uh, which I didn't do <laughs> because I got a job elsewhere in the theatre. Um, but they gave me preferred status as an outside artist. Ah. Uh, so that kept so me. So you weren't on contract, you were. No. Um, but they gave me a cash prize. <laughs> the BBC? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid so, yeah. <laughs> That's something they would have stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and so you developed into, but, but your, you, you, you acted. But how did the comedy side come out? Um, well, so, uh, mainly because you earned more money doing it. Um, really, I mean, I'd had a pretty checkered career. Um, my mum sent me to a public school, which she couldn't afford to do. Um, and so I, I, I explained to my housemaster. I, uh, we can't keep up the payments. <laughs> being, there for, being there for a term, I think. And um, he was a rather strange bloke. And he said, um, "Come back and see me in an hour." He came back and saw him. He said, "Got a letter here. Uh, take this to the Grand Hotel and give it to the manager." And uh, so, from about 13 onwards, um, I worked in the kitchens at the Grand. Uh, <laughs> graduate, you know, uh, was a reception waiter at night and and so on, and paid all my fees. Um, uh, with my mum. I didn't have a father around. Um, and then I found that I could earn money um, doing uh, Sunday night cabarets in the hotel, maybe three different hotels, do two spots, um, do the first one, go on to the next hotel and do the first one, next hotel and do the, come back and do the second spot. <coughs> and then um, I got a job uh, on the pier uh, with Sandy Powell. Um, oh, as a, doing props, uh, and was sacked. <laughs> uh, the problem was, it, it gave me a back of a cornflakes packet, and it was sort of roughly um, uh, 12 beer mugs on trestle table, set downstage blacks. You know, things like that. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so I used my initiative, and I got a trestle table and set it there when I was supposed to, um, and um, filled up the beer mugs with beer, which I managed to con off them. And um, I'm standing uh, up on a uh, perch position where they used to have, you know, electrics used to work from those in the, those days, you know. Yeah. And um, the, um, the electrician said to me, he said, well, what have you done? Uh, I said, what? He said, well, don't, he's Sandy, he's in trouble. And uh, Sandy, there's the Chelsea pensioner sketch, you may not know this thing, but he used to do um, these Extraordinary, they're very, very funny sketches. Uh, and he, they do two shows a night, three programs, two shows a night, and people came again, again, and again, like Wilson, Kepler, and Betty. Yeah. They knew exactly what they were going to come yeah, for, yeah. and they just, they were laughing before he did, did, did anything. And um, it, it, he's supposed to drink. 12, I just realised what you were going to say then, he 12, had to drink 12 pints. Yes. <laughs> and well, you, you drink mugs with a, a sort of inverted 
glass, you know, so that so he just had drop the over the top. Yeah. Um, so he was getting... I was about to say a very rude word. Um, but he'd had it. <laughs> so I, I got the sack, um, and his uh, lovely wife, uh, Kay, uh, said, um, just as I was going, you know, in shame, she said, um, have you got anything to go to? I said, no, it's all right, it's all right. I've got a job um, at the Queen's Hotel, as it was this time, at, at the end of the pier. It's the first one you see over there. You see it? Oh, right. She said, what, what do you wear? I said, breakfast with a white, like a mess dress thing, with a very, very, very long apron, um, and, you know. And then um, uh, lunch and dinner, we wear tails. She said, are they your tails? I said, yes. She said, come back at 10.30 or as near to as you can manage tomorrow. Yeah. So I went back the next day. Uh, Sandy is so... <laughs> that his feet, he's wearing carpet slippers, you see, but he always, his first entrance, always used to be immaculate, uh, in full evening dress, uh, you know, a little cape, top hat, and white um, scarf, and gloves, and so on. And he just used to walk into a spotlight and go, can you hear me, Mother? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it, he couldn't do it because, <laughs> because his feet were in a terrible state. What they did was um, they worked out all the, the uh, sight lines. He came very, very far down stage near the footlights, which were jocked up like that. She said, and what you've got to do is you come, come in upstage. He said, ladies and gentlemen, it's a starlight show, and here is your host, Mr. Sandy Powell. And he'll just walk into the light there. You've made the entrance by proxy for him, you see. The upstairs strongest entrance. So they don't see his feet. Like that, and it goes, like that, yeah. And he said, we're going to work you into, oh, um, hey ho, hey ho. It's off to work, you know, dwarf shoes on the knees. Um, <laughs> um, they're changing guard at Buckingham Palace and all that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, then I sort of shifted direction. Have I gone? I've, I've been. Uh, I love it. <laughs> we were, you worked quite a bit with the legendary Morecambe and Wise. Yes. A couple of stories about that, perhaps, and then we'll move on to Doctor. Oh. Well, I think, it, to be absolutely honest, the best people I've ever worked with uh, in all spheres have been the nicest. The, I don't think there's any reason for people to be temperamental or. Um, I for them to care about what they do, but but not to be generous. And I mean, Eric, uh, and uh, he, I mean, what, what happened? <laughs> I did uh, a sketch uh, when they went to Thames. Um, uh, it's a typewriter sketch, uh, and uh, we finished, and the taping is all done. And Eric said, "Then he said, do you enjoy that?'" I said, "Well, no, I didn't. Bloody well didn't." He said, "Why? What's the matter?" I said, "Well, that Jimmy Young." You, had him, you got him singing the number at the end. What about me? I, I could have sung that Bring Me Sunshine business. <laughs> Said no more. He, re he realised it was a joke. Beginning of the, of the next week, he phoned me up and said, um, uh, any chance you could get over for the taping on Thursday? Uh, because uh, there's something I'd like you to see. And, it, and I said, well, not really. I, I, you see, are you doing anything? I, well, I said, no, please. Do it. Do, do tell us that, yeah, a couple of hours, you know, uh, and uh, turn up in time just to have a you know, coffee or a drink or something like that before we start the taping. Uh, and anyway, I turned up, he went, Hello. he said, here, um, take this with you, there, there's your dressing room key, it's all been arranged with your agent, he said, and in your dressing room you will find a recording of Bring Me Sunshine. You've got, um, well, you've got about an hour to learn it. <laughs> So I did, and what they did was, they, at the end of the show, they used to <laughs> uh, come out uh, through, through the taps. And, um, well, this time, they came out and had a ram. And the, an orchestrated uh, choreographed oh, yeah. rap, yeah. And I, I buzzed off. I had to be careful. Um, <laughs> buzzed off in opposite directions. Buzz, buzz, buzz. And um, the taps went out. And there was nobody there. So I came around the corner and said, excuse me. Um, I think somebody should be sick and realise this is my big chance, you know. And uh, so I did the whole number. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> they came right at the end. I didn't think they were going to, and we all went off, you know. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, lovely. I, 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 I mean, that is so generous, isn't it? I mean, it's... Totally. <laughs> lovely. I, 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 I grew up 
watching you do all these things. And then, in the early 1980s, suddenly, you're doing a Dalek voice. Yes. How on earth did that come about? Oh, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone must have cast you or got hold of you. Well, I was very hard up. Yes, well... But you were very hard up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. It was... Then Morgan, um, a cousin of... Oh, dear, I can't... Ben Travers. He's related to Ben Travers. Oh, right. Well, the fast man. Yeah. Right. Anyway, he said, um, I think I've got a job for you. He said, can you do this? I said, oh, yes. Because um, the director was Matthew Robinson. Matthew that Robinson. Oh, that's, that's who we're talking was about. It, yeah, I think it was. He was, the, he was the director, yeah. yeah. You have to remind me about all these things, because it, it's an awful <laughs> long time ago. Have you heard of and things called the Daleks? They appear in a programme <laughs> called Doctor Who. <laughs> you just heard of television. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Matthew Robinson was the director. Yes. So is he, is he, he was is he a relative of Ben Well, Travis? I'm just wondering whether he was or somebody else was. But uh, I, I can't tell you. All right. You've got, you've got this role anyhow. And yes. at the time, I just remember thinking you had such a distinctive voice, such a distinctive character that you came across on TV. I couldn't imagine anyone less likely to be playing a Dalek voice. No. <laughs> I, 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 that was a bit of a conundrum for me, really. Um, and uh, t- <laughs> nobody cared. <laughs> I have to tell you, nobody cared at all. That first one that we did, um, we were um, there were t- two of us, I think, on the first one. You and Roy Skelton. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen him for dog years yet. He's not. Uh, <laughs> he's not here today. No, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, he, he plays Bungle. You probably know that. <laughs> yeah. you know, and um, Zippy and yeah, all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. And he's a nudist. <laughs> He That's is. what I did. Yes, he lives in, he lives in Brighton. He, oh just no! Opposite the nudist beach. Yes, he's got a, just his own tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, I should mention. <laughs> Come in here. I, I can stand in. Kevin, cut tunnel. that one as well, please. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> so you and this, you, he didn't make you go nudist on doing that because you're behind screens, weren't you? I'm wondering well, what you got up we to. We were now. actually hidden in amongst the sets on the floor, um, and uh, you, you know, it's very weird because you're going, "You will be exterminated," or something all that sort. You yeah. See? You see, it's not the radiophonic work. <laughs> 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 who needs who needs the old thing when you can just go like that? Oh, yeah.